Hello and welcome back to another one of Paul's beer reviews. Uh, as you can see, slightly different surroundings. Uh, I'm currently on holiday or vacation. I'm in uh, America and I'm in Boston, Massachusetts to be exact at the moment. Uh, I've had a really great time. I've been here nearly two weeks now. Been traveling around America, been to New York and Tennessee, uh, but mostly Boston because uh, my brother lives here, which some of you might know. Uh, so I'm currently here in Boston and uh, I've drunk a lot of beer. And I haven't done any reviews or anything, I haven't done any content. I thought it'd be uh, amiss of me to not uh, do at least a couple of beer reviews whilst I'm here. Uh, so I'm going to review one that I was really keen to drink as soon as I got to America. Um, some of you might know I'm a, I'm a massive fan of Miller Genuine Draft. Uh, we can't get that in the UK. Uh, but ones that we can't get is this one, the Miller High Life. Never had this, uh, so I'm going to be reviewing this today. So there is the bottle. It's got that uh, iconic Miller shaped bottle to it. It's kind of got like a sharp ridge that goes up. So a bit different from what we're used to. Um, so this beer is coming in at 4.6%. It describes itself right there as the champagne of beers, which I find quite amusing. Um, but yeah, this is, I think, considered the premium uh, offering from Miller. Uh, obviously they've got Miller Genuine Draft, which funnily enough, I've not seen Miller Genuine Draft anywhere since I've been here. I've seen Miller Light and I've seen this stuff, the Miller High Life. Uh, so maybe uh, the GD is a little bit harder to come across. Um, Miller from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Started brewing in 1903. And this one is coming in, say, 4.6. Now, one thing I have noticed about American beers, they're quite... They're very subtle with the way that they display the ABV. It always seems to be really small. So it seems like every beer I've picked up, you've had to really search for the alcohol by volume. Don't know if there's a reason for that. The Americans just do it that way, but who knows. There is the Miller High Life bottle cap gonna get it into a glass because that's what i do always pour it into a glass but it is obviously a clear bottle um so yeah the thing i like about miller genuine draft is how smooth it is how easy drinking it is this is considered uh their premium product so as you can see clear gold lager gentle carbonation Rolling up the glass here, you can see that in the light. Let's get me snout into it with the aroma is turning. Let's do that sort of half a finger of white head. And that is another thing I've noticed about American lagers. They have more of a, a corn sort of content, more of con corn in the, in the grain bill. And there is a slightly sweeter aroma to it. But other than that, it smells like your, your average lager, to be honest with you. It's a slightly sweeter, touch a touch a hop to it, not a lot. Bit citrusy, slightly sweet. Let's get stuck in. Cheers. Oh. It's good. It's good. It's not complex, but it's smooth. It's massively drinkable. You are getting that touch of sweetness and it, for me, it's coming from the corn. I don't know what else could be in it. It would make the difference. And so much in the way on the bottle. I don't know if it says any more in the box. I bought a six pack. It's another thing I find frustrating about American stores. There's not many places you can buy individual, individual bottles or individual cans. They're all like four packs, six packs, 12 packs. Kind of frustrating me, just want one. So, but I don't know. First world problems. Oh. But yeah, there's a touch of sweetness there. A touch of sweetness. A little bit of a slightly hoppy finish to it. A touch of bitterness, not a lot. But it's massively drinkable. It glides down. And there is definitely a... Or it's just the quality of the water that Miller use in Milwaukee, but it's always really, really smooth, always really drinkable. There is just a, a recurring theme to Miller beers. They're just massively drinkable, and it's exactly the sort of thing I'd be happy to sit on a Sunday afternoon while I was watching the football. You could get through a few of these very, very quickly. Mm. I think in terms of mass-produced lagers, readily available lagers. This is one I'd happily drink again and again. There's no nasties to it. It tastes fresh. 
there's a decent bit of flavour to it. It's massively refreshing. No issues whatsoever. I like that, it's gone. Um, yeah, that is a perfectly decent lager. A perfectly decent lager. It's not going to blow your mind. I don't think the Germans have got anything to worry about in terms of complexity with their lagers, but this is a quintessential American lager. It's massively drinkable. It's got a bit of flavour to it. It's got a nice kick to it, but essentially it's the drinkability of it, which I think the Americans care about more than anything. It's the sheer drinkability of the lager. And uh, so I've got no issues with it. I'd happily sit there and drink a few, and I have. <laughs> so there we go. So Miller High Life. Um, I mean, I give it a score. I don't know why I bother most of the time, but um, I like it. I like it. It's the sort of thing I could sit on an afternoon and just drink a fair few of and not not have to worry about it. Um, I'm going to give that a solid 8 out of 10. I think it's a really good product. So once again, Miller High Life, 4.6%. I like it. If you're in a state... I'm sure you've probably already had it many, many times. If you're from the UK, like myself, I recommend having a go. I recommend having a go on it. It's the perfect thing to chill and drink on a nice Sunday afternoon when you're watching the sport or listening to some music or whatever. It's, uh, it's a good beer. It's a Miller High Life, 8 out of 10 for me. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you have. Till my next one, you take care.